Welcome back to the Winner's Circle. We have a special guest today, Peter Moylan. Super excited to ask him some questions about how he got started with baseball and his professional career overall. Peter, welcome, man. Thanks for joining us. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's just dive right in. If you look okay. up your baseball journey, a lot of the articles and interviews really start with you detailing your previous life as a self-described laborer that would do anything or a few years later talking about your back surgeries while with the Twins organization. But I want to go back even further to how you found baseball at all. Is it true okay. that you started playing t-ball in your first years at grammar school, largely because your father had seen a couple of Astros games and fell in love with the sport? Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, he, uh, he came over to the US for a business trip and went to the Astrodome, wow. uh, fell in love with baseball, as everyone would have who walked into that place. Uh, <laughs> brought back a glove and a bat and was like, all right, we're going to try this out. So we had to go find a T-ball place. Uh, and we're talking 30 years ago now. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't quite as popular as it is now. We didn't even have a little league baseball back then. We, right. the first time we picked up a baseball bat was under 13. So you had to be 12 years old to even wow. pick up a baseball bat. So yeah, I got lucky. Uh, I had to make a couple of choices throughout my life as far as what sport I wanted to continue to play, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm glad I chose. I'm glad I chose baseball in the end. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a pretty good choice there, uh, if I do yeah. say so myself. So after your T-ball experience, even a few years after that, did you have a favorite team you were following in the states, a favorite player even, or were you just soaking up all that the Australian leagues had to offer? Yeah, it was for me. It was just trying to find where I could access the info because it was before, yeah. but when I was a kid, especially like there was no internet, so. I used to remember watching VHS tapes of like this week in baseball that would come out and it was just like completely amateur style trying to watch videos yeah. as an Australian kid. But right. um, I guess the Mark Maguire, Sammy Sosa thing was pretty big. And I remember jumping on eBay and trying to find newspaper clippings from, from like cool days in history and that sort of stuff and yeah. any kind of baseball t-shirts that I could find. So as a, as a kid in Australia, it was hard to find content, but um, I'm, I'm glad I was able to find what I did. And, and um, I guess that as far as the playing goes, as a younger person, because we're not exposed to travel ball and we're not exposed to the I guess, sheer volume of games that kids play over here, right. then scouts saw us as a, as, a, as a plus because if we were able to show any signs of, of uh, I guess, talent, then our arms aren't exactly wasted or, or overused like they would be sometimes in the States. So we're very raw as right. Australian as Australian players. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. This is to a far lesser degree, but I'm from the Northeast and I was a pitcher. Yeah. So we play less games there because of the snow and the cold weather. And oftentimes scouts will look at pitchers from the Northeast and say, oh, you know, they have more innings in their arm because they're yeah. not doing, you know, the showcase and then to the entire 100 game season, stuff like that. Um, Erico Flaherty is from Walla Walla, Washington. We talk about that all the time, man. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So there's there's definitely something there, at least the scout's yeah. opinion. And that's all that matters, right? <laughs> hey, if you think that I'm exactly. talented enough to give me a chance because I don't have many, yeah. That's, uh, that's the reason why I kept my job for so long, man. It's like, oh, you, you still want to pay me to play baseball? All right, <laughs> let's go, let's do it, I'm here. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, all right, so what were your first impressions of actual baseball games then? Once you started playing, were you immediately hooked or did it take a bit longer? No, I was immediately hooked. I loved, uh, I loved the idea of, of the game and still love everything to do with the game. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a reason why I kept playing after I got released the first time is because I just genuinely love the game of baseball. I loved coaching. I loved – and I've, I've, I've had – the beauty of being able to see it from all sides. I've been in the game. I've been out of the game. I've been at every level you can play at internationally, yeah. um, you know, Olympic qualifiers, world baseball classics. I've seen, I've seen all that you can see and, and I still have a passion and a love for the game. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. at what point did the thought creep into your mind that, you know what, maybe I could pitch in the big leagues? Uh, when I got the phone call that said, Hey, you're getting called up to the big leagues because <laughs> you got to understand. I was just a, I was a pharmaceutical rep that was pitching for a team Australia right. in the world baseball classic. So yeah. like I'd set myself a goal just to compete and succeed at that level and prove to myself and other people that I could have done it. Had I not been a complete 
screw up the first time around. Yeah. So when I got a phone call the next day from the Braves saying, hey, we want to sign you. We want to give you a shot at this. I was already a pharmaceutical rep. I was already sort of set up with yeah. what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So right. it was a bit of a bit of a hump in, in, the, in the road, I guess. But um, yeah, two weeks after I had started my triple a season i got called up to the big league so i was pretty pretty happy with uh with the decision yeah what a story man that that's so crazy cool. man yeah uh, i mean and pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical rep is not a bad fallback you know right exactly and <laughs> that's a, i always knew that i could fall back on sales somewhere right. in yeah. some avenue but yeah uh, again I, i'm also lucky that i've found a job in baseball that allows me to continue to talk about it like i do now so i'm i'm Definitely. very very lucky man yeah, awesome. All right, so you were initially signed as a 17-year-old, if my math is correct. Can you explain what that experience is even like? You're on your own for the first time in your life in a country that you're not familiar with, and while mm -hmm. you do speak the language, are by all kind accounts of. an outsider trying to get on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. The biggest shock to me, honestly, was um, I come from Australia where I'm considered a pretty good baseball player. Right. And I show up to my first spring training. It's 2000, it's actually, it's 1996. And I show up to my first ever spring training and just the sheer athleticism of everybody around me was basically a punch in the face because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. It was every single person there was, was a better outfitter, a better hitter. I was there <laughs> to pitch obviously, but the sound of the, of the, of the bats, the cracking of the bats. Right. I'd not heard that before. And this was just rookie ball. So um, yeah, for me, the initial shock was was massive. Um, I fit in pretty well with people as far as my personality goes. I, I like to joke around and make people laugh. So some people can push that away. Some people uh, embrace that. So yeah. you get to learn who who your friends are going to be pretty quickly. But um, yeah, the, the initial shock was was pretty massive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine 17 years old, you get there and you have all of these players at spring training. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I, I was, I was a junior when I got drafted and I still kind of had that shock of, whoa, all right, this is kind of, this is a different level of talent here because you have those 17, 18 year olds who are just out of this world talented and yeah. they look like they're 12 years old and they're hitting home runs yeah. off 98 mile an hour fastballs. Whoa, 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 wait, back up here. Uh, exactly yeah and this it's, was before 98 was even a thing like i'd watch guys true, true. 95 was cool back in the day like oh right. man you, okay yeah that, you don't <laughs> see that a lot but now it's like 95 is the new 88 yeah yeah 95 is the new norm all right yeah. so uh we don't normally talk about win reality on the winner circle but i have to ask since i know you talked about it on farm to fame as mm -hmm. a pitcher how do you feel about hitters getting to throw on a vr headset moments before they'd walk up to the plate and face the real thing I know that you've uh, that would have eaten me up on the mound if I had known guys walking up to a plate had already seen my stuff. Yeah, that's the as long as it's legal, I've got no problem with it whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're doing stuff that's legal, then you do whatever you need to do. But I just think that the future is now as far as what you guys are doing. Um, yeah. I think it, it's only going to get more accepted amongst players right. and teams right. and yeah. those that accept it kind of like analytics. The people that accept it quicker are going to have the success earlier and the other people are going to be left catching up. So yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's it's here to stay. And I think what you guys have done is is to be commended as a pitcher. I think you I wish you'd stop, but I'm a former pitcher, man. So you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. As a former pitcher, I'm like, yeah, this would have this would have kind of been in my head a little bit. But, you know, that's why I'm standing here interviewing people. Uh, that are washed up like myself, if you will. Yeah. Of, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, instead, instead of still out there slinging baseballs. No, right. but it, it, yeah, we appreciate that and, and your honest opinion on the product. Obviously, we're super excited about it, but we're on the mm. inside. So hearing your thoughts is, is just really great, um, especially yeah. someone as accomplished as yourself. But man, we, we so appreciate having you here and I, I appreciate your honest answers. It was great getting to know your story and how you got to baseball and now what you're doing with your life. My pleasure, man. I'll come back anytime you want me to. And I, I got to come to Austin and try this stuff out because it looks you have awesome. To. Yeah, yeah, we got to get you out here, man. You can see this, this psych wall that we have here, you know? Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Open invite anytime, man, seriously. I appreciate that. And I'm going to take you up on it, I swear. Hey, do it. Well, with right. open arms. All right, man.
Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of The Winter Circle. We had Peter Moylan on, awesome discussion about how he found baseball. Go check out his podcast, Farm to Fame. It sounds like it's absolutely incredible. I'm going to go check it, check it out after this. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel below, and we hope to see you on the next Winter Circle.